This video is another in the series from the 16 Principles of Operations Management. Today we are talking about unified purpose and how you can apply these principles in your business. If you're interested in learning more about these 16 principles, then make sure you check the other videos in our playlist. What should you create for a unified purpose? Let's start the other way around. If you do not create a unified purpose for the company and its processes, there will be no direction or focus on what you need to do as an employee to help grow the company. So what is a unified purpose? You must communicate to your staff why their work is essential in order to motivate and retain them. You do that by establishing a common goal, a corporate purpose that your team can believe in and get behind. Unified organizations provide employees with more efficiency, communication, work culture and job satisfaction. Organizations must create an inclusive working environment in which individuals feel like they belong, regardless of job title or seniority. In an increasingly competitive environment, employees must have a sense of shared accountability for the company's goals. Only then will businesses be able to surpass their rivals. In our experience, having a more united company leads to a greater sense of motivating among employees. However, bringing people together to examine the bigger picture may be difficult. No employee is more important than the company, so it's vital that you take them all into account when making decisions. You'll have rogue individuals who are only concerned with their own success. Get rid of them, they'll do more harm than good in the long run. The goal of unification is to create a company-wide awareness of the mission and corporate principles. The Core Whatever the case may be, regardless of whether it begins with marketing, sales or customer support, everyone requires a common center to connect to or a shared core. What is the essence of your company? A firm foundation anchored by a shared objective. Your core is made up of your firm's mission and vision, as well as its fundamental aim. It is maintained by the hands of your staff who uphold it. The difficulty is that many firms today do not have clear objectives or vision statements in place and their workers are unaware of them. How can you tell if your vision is clear? Would everyone give the same answer if a stranger asked each employee? Why does this firm exist? If you're not sure that the visitor would receive a similar response from every worker, concentrate on this area first. It's unrealistic to expect your employees to collaborate if they don't understand the overall objective. How can your staff operate together if they disagree on what the ultimate goal should be? We want to combine the company as a whole in order to provide a uniform client experience. That's why, in order to become a unified business, you must first define your company's fundamentals and why. Identifying your client's issues This is the first step in creating a unified purpose. Customers experience three sorts of problems. According to Donald Miller, founder of Story Brand and author of Building a Story Brand, External, Internal and Philosophical. External problems An external problem is the one you can see. This could be a client approaching a bank for a loan to buy a property, car insurance in order to drive, or a financial advisor to manage your money and attain your life goals. These are all different difficulties and they're fairly straightforward to spot. Internal problems The internal problem is how a customer feels about their external issue. We may not see it and they may not even vocalize it, but they are thinking about the situation. Even more significantly, they have an opinion on it. For example, a customer may stay awake at night worrying how they are going to pay for their children's tuition fees. They may have an increasing salary or savings aside, but in order to maintain their lifestyle and cover their future requirements, they might not see clearly how they are going to meet all these obligations. Fear and uncertainty are caused by this unpredictability. They don't have faith in their abilities, they're unsure if they can accomplish it, and they may feel inadequate. 
Recognizing the interior issue means recognizing those emotions the consumer is experiencing. Philosophical problems The philosophical problem is the most important issue, more so than both the external and internal problems. To discover the philosophical problem, you need to ask, what is the significance of external and internal difficulties for individuals? It should not be a binary answer. You need deep answers. You should look at your customers' internal problems and place yourself in their shoes. The best way to create a strong, unified purpose is to see the problem as a philosophical issue. What exactly is wrong with it? As a society, why isn't it correct? Why is it a problem that individuals are having to solve this situation? Why would so many individuals be concerned that this is wrong? The philosophical problem is an overarching problem. It's a path that leads to high emotion. When individuals are happy and the problem is resolved, they have a sense of belonging. It generates a great deal of pleasure and happiness. It also provides a sense of self-esteem and, more significantly, an aspirational identity. People feel that they are a particular kind of person because they are combating this wrong or that they are a better person as a result of resolving this philosophical problem. A movement can be created by unifying a large number of individuals around finding a solution to a philosophical issue. What can you do? Define objectives that support your unified purpose. Once you have set up a unified purpose for your company, it's time to define specific objectives for each objective so employees know what they should be working towards. Objectives should be SMART, which stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Attainable and Realistic. This will help make them more clear and realistic. In order to be specific, you must define what the goal of the quantifiable target is. For example, if you want to improve customer service level from 75% to 80%, then your quantifiable target would be 75%. To make something measurable, it is necessary to determine who has responsibility for achieving that goal and what methods they should use to meet that goal. Ensuring that the objectives are achievable or attainable is primarily dependent on how much resources are allocated to them. Lastly, objectives should be realistic in order not to set yourself up for failure. If you set your goals too low, you will not be able to do much, and if they are unrealistic, then there is no sense in pursuing them. Develop operational policies and procedures. This will ensure all employees are operating under the same guidelines, so there is consistency across departments and everything runs smoothly without any hiccups. Operational policies and procedures should be clearly stated, so there is no confusion as to what they entail. For example, if you have processes that need to do with time management, then it will be best for employees to know the company's official schedule for breaks and lunches. This will ensure all your employees stay productive throughout their workday. Policies and procedures should also be up to date so there are no mistakes or misunderstandings. For example, if you have a policy stating your employees need to stay until the last customer leaves but then someone clocks out before everyone is gone, then that will cause problems because you now have people who think they can leave early while others are still working. It would be ideal to have employees sign off on the policies and procedures so they are aware of what is expected from them, as well as ensuring there are no legal issues if any disputes arise later on down the road. Once you've created your policies and procedures, it's important to implement them across all departments consistently. These are just a couple of points on strengthening the unified purpose. We hope they help. Let us know in the comments of any more tips you may have from your organization.